Today on TFB TV, we're talking about what stoner would do well. I've got quite a few stoner friends. All they do is eat pizza rolls and watch Blippy. So I don't know why these guys, Ian McCollum and Carl Casarda, think that a stoner would build a space rifle when they can't be bothered to answer a doorbell, but here we are. I'm kidding, of course. The WWSD, or What Would Stoner Do, is a concept that Ian and Carl of InRange TV put together as an answer to the question of what Eugene Stoner, the inventor of the AR-15, would do if modern technology were available to him when he designed this weapon system nearly 70 years ago. As a brief caveat before we start the video, Ian and Carl are acquaintances of mine, and I've got a tremendous amount of respect for them and for their work. So do with that what you will. Also, Brownells, who sells the WWSD, they're not a sponsor of the program or anything, but I have friends that work for Brownells, and I also think they're a great organization that I've got respect for, too. So I'm just filling you in on my potential biases in reviewing this rifle. In short, the WWSD is an extremely lightweight AR-15, one of the lightest that I've ever handled at five pounds. It uses a KE Arms one-piece polymer receiver, a carbon fiber handguard, and a lightweight profile or pencil barrel. Even though there's a complete 16-inch AR-15 barrel under here, it's so light and well-balanced that you can actually extend this rifle all the way out and fire it one-handed without any trouble at all. I'm a fan of lightweight builds, so the WWSD was instantly appealing to me. I also bought the lower cost version, the CDR, or Civil Defense Rifle. There are quite a few differences between the features of the two, but the CDR is basically a stripped down WWSD with an aluminum handguard instead of this fancy carbon fiber one. Now, because of all of that, the WWSD is about $600 more expensive than the CDR. I've actually been reviewing the CDR. I've had it for like almost a year now, it feels like. I've had it longer than I have the WWSD, and I will have a follow-up video on the CDR in the near future, and I'll tell you which of the two I think is a better buy. Let's go over the specs of the WWSD real quick before we jump into the review. I mean, you guys... We're expecting that, right? It's been seven years of TFB TV. You know the drill by now, so buckle up and listen to the specs, bitch. This is a 16-inch barreled 5.56 AR-15, but it's very unique, starting with the KE Arms KP-15 polymer lower receiver and ultra-light one-piece receiver. That is the lower, the stock, and the grip all combined into one chunk of plastic. As somebody who owned a Cav Arms polymer lower back in the day, I was skeptical of KE Arms' ability to turn out a decent polymer lower. But the more I use this one, the more I like it. I guess it's kind of a weird analogy, but the Cav Arms lower looked like somebody sketched it out with a crayon, while the KE Arms lower looks like it was drawn with an illustrator's pencil. Much nicer much more precise, and KE Arms claims that it's about as sturdy as an aluminum AR lower. Ian and Carl did their homework when they selected the KP-15 lower, and as a side note, they have like a dozen videos on this effing thing, so I am giving you an overview. If you want to dig into any aspect of this, just go to InRange and poke around there. Going back to the lower, the buttstock, the buffer tube, the pistol grip, they're all one part of the lower, which makes this more durable than if those pieces were separated and screwed on, right? The area where the buffer tube and the pistol grip meet the receiver are two of the weaker points of the standard design. Similarly, the stock has reinforcement in the area behind the buffer tube to absorb buffer impact. Speaking of that, the WWSD buffer uses a JP Silent Captured Spring System, which is neat, but I've never understood the I hate the way an AR-15 spring sounds so bad that I'd spend money on it, people. When I was in college, there was some dude who lived the next apartment over from me in this old apartment building, and he had to break his lease solely because the floorboards being uneven apparently gave him my grains. He seems like the kind of guy who would get riled up by AR-15 recoil spring buffer noises. And even the takedown pins are part of the whole durability equation. There are no detent springs for the takedown pins because, again, having holes for capture detents in the receiver would actually weaken it. The receiver's grip shares the same grip angle as what may be the most popular AR-15 grip right now, the Magpul MOE. So like the 13-inch length of pull in the stock, the grip will work for most people, but if it doesn't, then I guess go f*** 
yourself is one of my favorite features the beveled magazine well that's part of the receiver is pretty cool it makes mag swaps easier than public school and as a bonus there's a buffalo bill style trap door in the buttstock here that's got more space in it than a manhattan flat look at all these essentials that you can cram into this thing it's like jenna jameson's prison wallet the wwsd uses the slt1 sear link trigger which is excellent the travel's extremely short the pull's right at four and a half pounds. It's an ideal compromise between like a heavier duty trigger and a too light match trigger. Believe it or not, I have no complaints whatsoever for this trigger being in a jack of all trades style rifle. The Ambi mag release is good too. It's got a traditional mag release button here on the right hand side and a neat little mag release tab here on the left hand side under the ping pong paddle. The PDQ Ambi bolt release is also a decent upgrade. It's much easier to lock the bolt open for clearing malfunctions or just showing clear with the ledge on the right hand side and probably a quicker means of sending the bolt home if you haven't already developed years of muscle memory using the perfectly fine original magazine release paddle on the left hand side. I personally wouldn't spend the money on this upgrade myself, but looking at reviews from other owners indicates that people effing love this feature of the gun. The only feature I think I utterly despise about this rifle is the ambi safety. Pandering to the 10% of the population who have the genetic mutation known as left-handedness means that I have this big lever that I'm almost never going to use on the right hand side of the rifle that I would repeatedly engage with the first knuckle of my index finger during mag changes when I'm reaching for the mag release button. It's unusual. I think I flipped the safety off. Like that's what happened is I'm reaching there to do the reload and with my trigger finger, I accidentally bumped that off. I left it in place for the video, but as soon as I'm done filming this conversation, I am throwing this son of a bitch into a forgotten parts drawer. The upper is also built to be tougher than quitting drugs while still being lighter than an adult mallard. Really, the carbon fiber handguard is the rug that ties the whole room together, and the main feature differentiating the WWSD from the CDR. It's ultra lightweight, and its octagonal shape means that you get a whopping eight rows of M-Lock attachment points, so you can hang more goofy shit off this gun than on a wall at shenanigans. Unfortunately, there's no means of mounting a front sight unless you do something really clever or really dumb, but Ian and Carl agreed that modern optics being what they are and as robust as they are today, the weight and the cost savings justified this decision. Similarly, the upper's slick and doesn't include a forward assist. The pencil barrel is properly gassed with a mid-length system. We'll talk about that in more detail in a second when we're talking about accuracy. I did say properly gassed, and that's to say that a 16-inch barrel should use a mid-length gas system. And the upside is that it has extremely mild recoil. This is a very, very soft shooting gun, very fun to shoot. The bolt carrier is from Young Manufacturing, a very well-known manufacturer of high-end bolt carrier groups, and it includes an HM Defense bolt. The bolt, the bolt carrier, and the carrier key are all chromed for corrosion resistance and increased reliability versus, say, phosphated components. The upper's also got an ambi charging handle, which looks good and functions well, although the thin profile of the T-handle makes me worry a little bit. And I think that I prefer the CDR's much more robust charging handle. But latch failures are uncommon, so my concerns might be a little bit overstated. Now that is a lot of shit, and like my CPA says, shit adds up. In this case, it adds up to about $1,700. bucks. we will look at the price to performance at the end of this video. But how does the lonely stoner perform on the range? Well, we did a little run and gun, and we did some shooting from a bag to check handling and accuracy. As far as handling goes, it's great. This is such a lightweight, nimble rifle that working around a barricade was easy and fun, which was a little surprising considering that you're stuck with a fixed stock and you're using a full-length 16-inch barrel. Now, the WWSD could lose further weight with a shorter handguard, but you have to remember that it uses a pencil barrel. These lightweight profile barrels are more susceptible to point of aim, point of impact shift, not only from heat and barrel whip, but also if you rest them on a hard object. Accordingly, 
I think the full length handguard selected for the WWSD was a good choice. You don't have to worry about accidentally resting the barrel on a barricade. And if you're pulling into a slot that's too tight, you can just force the handguard forward into the obstacle for stability without really affecting your accuracy. The flared magwell makes mag swaps a breeze, and other than the significant but fixable issue of my accidentally knocking the ambi safety every time I change mags, the controls are pretty much perfect. I love the trigger, recoil is almost non-existent, even for such a light gun. This seems like an excellent backpacking or fighting rifle, it's just versatile. I of course went with a Blue Force Gear Vickers Sling. If you've been watching TFB TV for the past three or four years or so, you know that the BFG Vickers is my go-to automatic and it was great to have in the WWSD. I strongly recommend it for yours. Clint Smith turned me on to Blue Force Gear Slings and I haven't bought a different one from any other company since. The stock does have points, you can see here, for sling swivels, but we just kind of strung ours through the buttstock loop, old school, just like pulling out. It worked fine, and it looks kind of cool, to be honest with you. If you want a QD socket, great. They're just 15 bucks from KE Arms. Again, the lightweight, the excellent trigger, the great balance of the WWSD made it very fun to kind of whip around the range. All right, now let's talk accuracy. Again, it's a pencil barrel, and as a fan of the lightweight profile and someone who owns several pencil barrel ARs, I can acknowledge that the benefits of lighter weight can be offset by less than stellar accuracy. The two main issues are barrel whip or barrel harmonics and heat stress. Even after just your first five round group, I'd expect things to open up by as much as an inch or so for your second group. But the good news is that pencil barrels also cool down much faster as well. Point of impact shift is another consequence of a hot barrel, but Ian and Carl, they did a whole video about this. They made sure that these barrels were properly stress relieved, so there's no point of impact shift. Yes, if it gets hot, the groups may open up, but at least they're going to be centered around your same point of aim. Second, and bear with me on this because there's going to be some real flat earther shit with this issue, but because lightweight barrels are less rigid than Medcon or heavy barrels, they may be less accurate. Now, I know this comment will have people up in arms because there are videos and tests out there that prove that the statement is false, and there are videos and tests out there that prove that the statement is true, but in my experience, it seems generally true because none of my pencil barrel ARs are more accurate than any of my heavy barrel ARs. Remember that video where my $199 DPMS heavy barrel upper shot tighter than 1.2 inch groups with Wolf at 100 yards? The WWSD uses the ideal one in eight barrel twist, which should stabilize everything from 50 to 80 grains perfectly. To test this out, we tried nearly everything from 50 grains to 77 grains in a marathon group shooting session. The WWSD performed pretty well. Again, I think you're going to see much better accuracy out of like a medium contour or a heavy contour barrel than a light profile, but for a pencil barrel, the WWSD held its own pretty well. Our best groups were right at about 1.75 inches at 100 yards with 62 grain cheap SS109. And believe it or not, we couldn't shoot any worse than two inches at 100 yards with cheap bulk 50 grain American Eagle, Varmint, and Predator. 1.7 and 1.8 inch groups all day over and over from the WWSD using cheap bulk 50 grain ammo. And bear in mind, that's exceptional accuracy in my opinion. There's some myth out there that all AR-15s are automatically one inch guns at 100 yards. Based on my experience reviewing AR-15s over the years, and I'm trying to say this in a way where you animals don't use this against me in the comments, but my standard is two inches. That is, can it shoot better than two inches at 100 yards with several different types of ammo? Both 73 and 77 grain Federal match shot two to two and a half inch groups. Then we switch to 72, 73 grain burger match. This is actually pretty strong. Now we're talking about um, my group here with, I think it was 73 grain, was it 73 grain, Ryan? I think so. 73 grain um, WWSD. And then Ryan did about the same. So these are respectable. Yeah, right about two, two and a quarter. Um, which, you know, not bad for a thin profile barrel. Weird enough, the WWSD absolutely hated Wolf Gold, which is one of my favorite dollar to performance ratio rounds. With 55 grain M193, our average group size was about four inches. We shot a half dozen groups or more, and we couldn't do better than like 3.3 inches, which was kind of crazy. American Eagle, cheap ass, 
bulk pack 50 grain varmint and you're talking like a two inch group probably better than the 73 grain match and here we are with a f***ing m193 again i i don't know like somebody who knows more about ar barreling precision rifles needs to explain this to me maybe it's a bad batch i don't know but it was like i was actually disheartened because i really like this rifle a lot like i truly do but then I'm, I'm shooting these, I mean, look at this. And I'm like, oh my God, like this is terrible. But it's really only one type, only one grain weight. So here we are with the SS109, actually one of the stronger groups of the day. Pretty strong, SS109, 62 grain, not bad at all. Then here's the 77 grain. I might've thrown that flyer, but you know, um, not bad and then this was ryan's with the 50 grain which is another again this is cheap bulk pack 50 grain um american eagle varmint stranger still was that some of our better groups with the cdr were with that same wolf gold ammo all said and done with ammo it likes even the cheap stuff it has sub 2 moa accuracy which is freaking fantastic for a fighting ar-15 I've got a lot of great things to say about the WWSD and I'm glad that I have it, but as you know by now, I don't do a video without taking a few shots at it. I already told you about the ambi safety that I kind of hate, but again, that's going to be an easy fix for me. We also talked about the weird accuracy issue with Wolf Gold M193, and that very well could be relegated to my rifle. I don't know, because the CDR was fine. The only other negatives that I would add is that you have a very limited amount of space for mounting optics, and there's no easy way to add iron sights. This is not the case for the CDR because it's got a full length rail. I guess if you just get a nice LPVO and drop it on here, it'll be a complete non-issue for you. However, when we put a monster 30X Bushnell on here with a big mount, we could only put it in one position and it was difficult to get the proper eye relief, especially considering that the stock's non-adjustable. Just something to be aware of. But for me, I would throw a red dot or an LPVO on this, call it a day, never think about it again. Finally, for some reason, my WWSD absolutely hated Lancer magazines. Again, maybe it was just my rifle. I had two Lancer magazines from different batches. I'd get regular failures to feed with it. And once the WWSD actually spit out a Lancer. Does not like those Lancer mags. That's like, for some reason, I love Lancer mags, but for some reason, whenever I'm jamming these Lancer mags in and hitting the bolt release, it, it's not chambering. It's obviously a mag-related issue or compatibility-related issue, but um, it's running perfectly with everything else. It's just these, uh, the Lancer mags, for some reason, is giving me some trouble. I don't know if it's just mine or if it's all of them, but the two that I have here, no go. It was really weird. I don't know if that's an issue for anybody else. I don't know what caused it. I can't even speculate and I don't really care too much because it worked flawlessly with every single other type of magazine that I have, including old P mags, random aluminum mags, as well as the Magpul D60 drum. It worked flawlessly, no failures whatsoever until I put Lancer mags in it. So is the WWSD worth 1700 bucks? Bear in mind, your cost doesn't end there because it doesn't even come with sights. So now you've got to buy an optic for it as well, which is going to increase your cost. That being said, an optic is such a great force multiplier. I would hope that would be one of your first purchases anyways. So I guess not that big of a deal, but let me put it to you this way. If you accept the premise that a good high-end mil-spec AR-15 is going to run you about $1,000 to $1,200, then you can make the case for the WWSD being worth the cash. So if you're one of those PSA guys, you don't believe that an AR should ever cost more than $1,000, not going to try to convince you that the WWSD is worth it to you. However, for those of us, men of culture, who know the drastic difference in quality between low-end and high-end AR-15s, let's say, just hypothetically, that you take a standard mil-spec pencil barrel AR-15, but you sub out the handguard for carbon fiber, add a match grade trigger, reduce the weight by two pounds, add completely ambi controls, a fancy captured buffer spring, and 
with all that, it's easy to get to 1700 bucks that way. I mean, hell, Daniel Defense V7s are 18 or $1,900 MSRPs. I guess I wouldn't recommend this for you if it's your first AR-15. I'd probably learn the basics on like a mid to high end mil spec. But if you've got an AR already, you'll properly appreciate this well-made, lightweight, very easy shooting rifle. I see the WWSD as like a good long hike or backwoods option, especially since it uses mostly polymer and carbon fiber construction that won't poke or rub you the wrong way on a long hike like an all-metal AR would. If you like everything you heard about this rifle today, I'll drop a link to the one I reviewed in my description so you can pick one up for yourself if you're so inclined. Oh, and of course, stay tuned because I'm going to bring you the WWSD versus CDR face-off soon. Now that we're done talking about WWSD, let's talk about WWJD. Everybody knows that means what would James do? Well, I would thank my sponsors, Ventura Munitions and Top Gun Supply, your online shooting sports superstore. Ventura sent all the ammo we use, Top Gun Supply, even though they don't sell the WWSD, everything else. Great. Also, we bring you guys independent reviews. I didn't accept money from Brownells or KE Arms or Ian or Carl or anybody the f ever else because I rely on you guys primarily on Subscribestar and on Patreon. You guys support us. We give you stuff back like a free gun giveaway. We give away four guns every single month on TFB TV Mailroom to thank you for your support because you guys keep us independent. But thanks as usual for watching and take care.